in the first hour and a half. The man was shot and fell dead two feet in front of me. I fell over him. Two more people died a couple of yards away, and another couple were lying injured and screaming. Kate Aidy, BBC News, Peking. Twenty years ago, in the spring of 1989, I was sent to China to report on the extraordinary events taking place in Beijing. For weeks, thousands of students had gathered in Tiananmen Square to demand a more just society and an end to government corruption. There I witnessed the brutal massacre of hundreds of people that started just before midnight on June 3rd, 1989. Now I'm returning to hear the memories of those who survived and to find out what happened to them and their dreams of freedom. My journey starts in Hong Kong, as it did in 1989. I'd been before a scurrying, industrious place with a tradition of freedom of speech. As I arrived that May, it was erupting with passion. Nearly a quarter of Hong Kong's population, over a million people, had surged onto the streets in support of the Tiananmen students. Many here dared to dream that China could change, that communism could fall. Then, getting into mainland China was simple, $50 to a backstreet travel agent for a tourist visa. But before last year's Olympic Games, the Chinese government proclaimed a new policy of openness. In theory, Western journalists are free to report anywhere. I've been allowed into China twice since 1989, but this time the embassy hasn't issued us with journalists' visas. Our only option is to travel as tourists, effectively undercover. My first stop in mainland China is Shenzhen, just across the border from Hong Kong. Filming is not going to be easy, as our crew soon find out. The local police seem to have a limited understanding of openness. We're working with a man who remembers 1989 well. Ding Kong was a student then. He's a brave man, passionate about freedom, who's contacting other eyewitnesses to the massacre for us. Within hours of arriving in Sichuan province, it's obvious that we have company. Despite the hordes of tourists and business visitors to China today, foreigners may still be followed by the secret police. There, that's them. Where? 191. Especially if you have a camera. What are they frightened of? They are afraid of some, some, some happenings which will damage the image of China. So uh, I think the measures they take is to stop people from seeing, seeing it. It's intimidation. Yes, it's actual intimidation, which is a violation of Chinese law, practiced by police. In other words, when we find it irritating, but in fact slightly amusing that they're so inept about following us and what they do, this is no joke to Chinese. No, not at all. And it is no joke to you either. If, if they perceive that you are doing something that they consider to be bad, they will intervene immediately. Returning, I find Beijing unrecognizable, changed from bicycle heaven to a consumer-driven machine, sporting Olympic trophy buildings. At the heart of the capital, though, Tiananmen Square appears to have changed little. A massive public space, but where the public is suspect. It's said that even those selling postcards are plainclothes police. There's a uniform everywhere you look. What there is not is a memorial, even a hint, as to what happened 20 years ago. 
No plaque or statue to honor the dead. In 1989, the square was full of thousands of students demonstrating against their government, a protest that ended in bloodshed. People tell us remembering is dangerous. These events remain taboo here, airbrushed from the history books and blocked on the internet. The Beijing Hotel was our base back then. The balcony are ringside seat to the killings on June the 3rd and 4th. Memories come flooding back. Our special correspondent, Kate Pady, was in the center of Peking when the shooting began. The noise of gunfire rose from all over the center of Peking. It was unremitting. On the streets leading down to the main road to Tiananmen Square, Furious people stared in disbelief at the glow in the sky, listening to the sound of shots. Heading down the road was a hazardous business, but hundreds of people cheered as buses were set alight and army trucks caught fire too. 